Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and I've got a little follow-up to yesterday's video on the GNOME desktop running on uh, on Solus OS. Um, and it's kind of twofold. One, I got a couple of questions, and I figured I'd just do a video answering those questions because other people may, may uh, be asking the same things. And then also a little issue that I ran into afterwards, after I did the video, and... Um, uh, you know how I fixed it so let me start with the little issue that I ran because or little issue I ran into because you know I said everything was running great on the GNOME desktop and everything was hunky dory and whatnot well then I opened up Caden Live and I had opened after I had installed GNOME Shell I had opened up Caden Live played around a little bit and everything seemed fine well so let me go and open this up and show you what I ran into here. Okay, so we've got Caden Live all set up, running, and when when I went and did did a new menu, everything seemed fine. Everything is fine running here in the timeline, but when you use either the save or the open menus, click that, and see, boom, most of it you cannot read. And so, you know, I figured, hey, this is all coming down to some kind of theming slash color issue on, you know, KDE color profiles, KDE theming, one of the two or a combination of the above. So I played around with the uh, with the default themes that are that are pre were pre-installed. And one nice thing on Caden Live is and I believe it's under settings, yeah. You, under settings, you can go and you can see right here, you can force the breeze icon theme, which I have done. Um, and then under theme, you have choices between a couple of different themes. Now the arc and the arc dark, I installed those, and that was kind of my fix for uh, for, for my issues. But by default, uh, on, on uh, Solus, breeze breeze dark and breeze high contrast are installed well i tried all three of those none of them would work out well for me so what i ended up doing was i i did a little searching online figuring like i said this is a theming issue uh we need a theme that uh that's gonna gonna uh, work well with the colors that i'm already using on the gtk side of things so um, I'm using the adapt the theme, which there wasn't uh, there wasn't a a uh, KDE version of the adapt the theme, but there is for Arc. So I installed the Arc theme. I'll show you how to do that in just a second, and everything was fine again. So I installed the Arc theme, and then under style, I went ahead and set it to GTK style, and let me shut her down and restart it. And now you can see you can read all the menus and everything is readable. It looks, you know, fairly, uh, uh, I guess, integrated or kind of blends well with the uh, with the current theming that I've got going on. So uh, everything is good there. Now, so if you want to get that that Arc KDE theme, it's not in the default repositories but it's easy enough to get from the arc github page and let me drag this over here and uh, this is here we are on github and uh, uh, the peppers development team arc kde and it shows all the files there but if you scroll down it shows you how to install right from github you just open up a terminal and you can either put in a root directory or a home directory. Just copy and paste that and uh, let it run and boom, you're good to go. It installs it in you know, whichever directory that you want. And uh, I'll, leave the, uh, I'll leave the address to the uh, GitHub page down in the description below so that you can, uh, you can take a look at that. And uh, if you need to go and do this fix yourself, you can do it. The next thing that I wanted to talk about has to do with multi-monitor support. And I actually got uh, several questions all revolving around multi-monitor support on uh, GNOME Shell. So 
I figured I'd just uh, you know add a little video section on on this video um, so I could talk a little bit about it now as I mentioned in the previous video there is a multi monitor extension that you can add that gives you a little bit of flexibility when working with your monitors um, and what I'm going to do is, you know, normally I don't set it up this way, but I'm going to pause the video. I'll start recording again uh, and record both screens at the same time. That way you can see um, what you get out of the multi monitor support. Now, n I will say that normally I've got my, uh, my setup um, uh, configured so that. I do not run a panel on my second monitor and the reason being is uh, that is the one that I normally do um, any artwork graphical work that kind of stuff on and I want to get as much screen real estate as I possibly can on that particular screen so I, I you know no uh, no panel over there and um, you know just trying to get the most out of the screen that I possibly can but um, you know, used to be uh, uh, I I didn't do quite as much of the uh, the graphical work as I do now, and I used to run you know multiple panels or you know panels on multiple monitors, and uh, this extension allow you to do that. So let me pause this real quick here. All right, so here we are with uh, you know I'm recording both screens, and you can see on the other screen that's where I've got you know. My simple screen recorder, GUVC video, uh, all my notes, uh, open web pages that I need, all that kind of stuff. Um, but let me go and open up the tweak tool. And we will go to the extensions and the multi monitor add on. Open up. Here we got the open the multi monitor add on. And you can see the way I have it set up. Um, show multi monitor indicator on top panel. Normally I don't run that, but if you go and click that, you now have an indicator so you can open up that top or you can open up this uh, uh, the the multi monitor settings uh, fairly quickly from your top panel. That probably would be useful if you are somebody that uh, uh, oh I don't know you uh, you're gonna constantly be changing what you want you know sometimes you want the panel on the second monitor sometimes you don't I could see that um, so in that case having this little indicator would probably be pretty useful so anyway you can go and show the panel on the additional monitor so we'll click that and you can see now I've got an additional panel there uh, do you want to show the activities button yes or no so you can get rid of that keep it if you want to show the thumbnail slider on initial monitor so I'm go and hit so you can see how that kind of works out there show app menu button that's if you're using the app menu um, show thumbnail slider where slider on the left side of additional monitor uh, and then you've got a list you can add um, indicators for transfer to the other monitor so I'm going to click plus um, maybe you want the you know and this is just these the uh, indicators that I've got running but if you wanted to maybe add the clipboard indicator to the other panel as well you go and click that add it on there or maybe caffeine so go and click that and you can see now yeah, I've got the additional clipboard monitor on this panel as well. And, you know, you could do it with all of these if you wanted, or you know, maybe you want to get rid of that uh, that indicator, whatever you want to do. But anyway, my point is, is that you've got um, you know you've got some options there as far as how you want to set up that multi monitor uh, support. Like I said, for me, uh, I don't want that extra panel, but if you did you got the option there to play around with that another question that I ran into uh, it has to do with a places menu on your uh, on your desktop and let me pull open the tweak tool again and there is an extension for um, adding a places menu to uh, to your top panel let me find it here here it is places status indicator um, 
Now in Solus, this extension is installed by default. That is not true on all distributions, but you can always go to the uh, GNOME extension website, download it if you're running a different, uh, uh, you know, a different uh, uh, um, distribution. But anyway, so if you activate the places status indicator, so now if you click on places, you get a drop down that shows basically all of your favorites that you stay that you saved in GNOME files. Um, you know, I've used this off and on over the years, and I guess I've never really, um, the places menu thing has never really done a lot for me. You know, I used it a little bit when I had it installed, but I can't say that I miss it. And to be quite honest, a lot of times it's just an extra step to opening up Nautilus files. To me, it seems like uh, you might as well just have a quick launch for files up here and just go right to the file manager. But that's just me. I mean, a, a lot of people really insist on having uh, that uh, that places menu. They really find it useful and, you know, awesome. There's an extension that lets you do that. Um, me personally, I want it out of the way. I just, uh, like I said, much better for me just go directly to the file manager same thing with um, kind of scrolling down on the extensions that are here there is a removable drive menu that you can that um, you've got an extension for here same thing I've never really found that all that useful um, but um, you know it may work out for some people they may, may really like it and may really insist on having that awesome that it's there um, that kind of covers all the questions that I had on uh, on GNOME Shell. Now I did get a couple of questions asking about setting up uncomplicated firewall on Solus, and um, you know, uncomplicated firewall it is terminal based, um, so you're going to need to open up the terminal and go through your settings via the terminal. And uh, I am going to do a separate video on how to set that up. However, I do want to point out that in the latest uh, Solus update that uh, the graphical interface for uncomplicated firewall is now available through the Solus repositories. So if you're somebody that, uh, um, you know, you've, you've set up uncomplicated firewall and say Ubuntu using the graphical interface, you can do essentially the same thing here. But I am still going to make up that tutorial um, just so that for those who like doing things from the terminal, you can see how to do it. And uh, while I'm talking about future videos, uh, here's stuff that I got coming up. Um, a little review of WPS Office, which is, uh, if you're unfamiliar with it, it is an Office suite. Um, uh, it's got its pluses and minuses, and you'll see that in the video. Um, Vivaldi, uh, an, a review on that. I haven't reviewed it since it was back in the preview stages, so just want to kind of give everybody an update on that one. And then, of course, I talked about the uncomplicated firewall. And then uh, also be doing a video on my whole video recording process, um, talking about uh, the pieces of hardware that I use, the software that I use, and uh, how I put everything together. And uh, having said all that, uh, that pretty much finishes us up here. As always, got comments, questions, all that kind of stuff, leave it down below. I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And hope to see you all on the next video. Thanks a lot.